Hello, everybody. Welcome to August 11th cooking class. Tonight we are making chicken bruschetta melts. That's the official name. And pan fried peaches. I think it's going to be delicious. And we're going to cook some veggies on the side because you got to have veggies, right? So I just want to start this class by reminding everybody that this the purpose of doing this class is really life skills, right? And the mission really of TRS in general is to really promote independence. We want all of our friends to be doing as much as they can to the best of their ability and we're here to support. I know a lot of you have family members in your home supporting you, but some don't. We actually have a number of friends on this class tonight that live on their own and that are doing this on their own. So it is my intention to serve all the levels, right? We got people on their own and people with massive support. So there are times where we wait because if we were as a group, that's what we would do. We want everyone to have the full experience and to be able to do all the steps as independently as they can. So there are times where you'll find me just like, how we doing? And for those of you that, have more experience or you have more support you might be waiting with me and that's okay we're not gonna leave a man behind never leave a man behind right no soldier on his own um, and then the other thing I just want to remind everybody is that of course safety is our top priority and I can't see you so please don't cut your fingers off <laughs> use pot holders if you need to if your pan doesn't have protected handles we're going to clean things, we're going to wash things, and I have to trust you that you're doing that right along with me. So I'm gonna give you all the recommendations. So follow along, we'll be safe, we'll be independent, and we're just gonna have the best time. So are we ready? You don't have to answer that. There are times where I need you guys to answer me in the chat so I can tell how people are doing. So we're gonna start every time you cook, you gotta wash your hands. In the days of COVID, it's like, whatever, but now we really go wash them. So warm water, 20 seconds. And of course I didn't come up with a song. <laughs> I need a theme song. Cooking in the kitchen, cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> I have to write on the 20 second song. Cooking in the kitchen with T-R-S. <laughs> Woo, my water is hot. Hey, clean hands. I can't even tell you, you guys, sometimes people show up at cooking class and they're like, I did wash my hands. I'm like, that's nice. And then, nope, we're not using the oven. And then they touch the car door or whatever. So, no, good question, Wendy. We are not cooking in the oven. I'm going to be trying as hard as possible to avoid the oven with my recipe selections until September, maybe October. I don't want us to heat up our houses as much as possible, even though the stove does get it hot, it's maybe less hot than the oven. So that's, that's the goal. Okay, here we go. I have our steps figured out, but we're gonna start with gathering some supplies. You guys, my favorite, for those of you the first time, garbage bowl, it's my favorite. I love a garbage bowl. So I'm not walking back and forth all the way, all the way over there. It's right here, my garbage can. But this just makes life so easy. So if you want a garbage bowl, I highly recommend it. Okay, then we're going to need a teaspoon and a tablespoon. I just did my dishes, and I think I used them last night. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I have a tablespoon right here. That is so exciting. I have a teaspoon. It's like I have 75 measuring spoons, but only one teaspoon. We need a cutting board. Mine's right here because I love it. We're going to need some mixing bowls. I'm going to get up in a minute. <clears throat> a large frying pan. Actually, I think the better way to do this tonight, I try and reduce dishes for us because nobody likes to do dishes. Um, but I think it will be best tonight if you have them. I think it's best if we use three different pans because I think it will reduce one, it will reduce mixing weird flavors. And two, we can kind of keep stuff warm while other stuff is going. So you need a biggish pan for your chicken. 
So I'm gonna use this bad boy, my favorite new pan. It's my favorite. If you have one with a lid, that'll be nice because we are melting cheese on top. So biggish. Oh, excuse me, Ethan. Biggish pan for our chicken. You're gonna need like a medium pan for your veggies. Mm hmm And then like a medium smallish pan for your peaches. Well, there's <laughs> look you guys, you wanna see the most ridiculous frying pan? Look. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? I love it. I love it. I actually use it sometimes. <laughs> so silly. Okay. And then a spatula and probably some other stuff. Mine's right here, so I'm going to analyze that later. Hopefully yours is just close to your stove. Okay. Let's start with, we're going to chop all the veggies. To get them ready. I really like to prep in advance, get all the chopping done so that when it's time to cook, you're not like, hey, I forgot to cut them, whatever, right? So we're gonna start with the tomatoes. The tomatoes. You need two Roma tomatoes. Why didn't I get those out? Because they were underneath my kale. So two Roma tomatoes, and go ahead and give them. A rinse. We want everything clean. Garbage bowl, best thing ever. So, washing tomatoes. Okay, let's talk about knives. So let me tell you what I know about knives and tomatoes. You want a knife that does not have the bumpy serrated edges. You want a smooth knife. We don't need a gigantor one for these, but you want a nice smooth knife. What am I gonna use? I think I'm gonna use this one. Is that true? Yeah, I'm gonna use this one. So see how this knife is smooth? It doesn't, I'll show you the other kind that you don't want. <laughs> you don't want this kind. Because with this kind, you have to like saw it more and this like smashes your tomato. I do it all the time. <laughs> I'm telling you this, you guys, because I've screwed up tomatoes many times. So you don't want this kind, you want the smooth kind. And then I'm gonna get a bowl to put my tomatoes in as we chop them. So you might wanna grab a bowl. They're not very big tomatoes, so you don't need anything gigantor. I just have this little baby bowl. So what we're gonna do with these babies is we're gonna take out the seeds. See how many cut open a tomato, so I'm gonna cut him open. I'm gonna cut them open from top to bottom, top to bottom. And on the inside, this is not a very good demo. On the inside is all this wetness and these seeds. You don't really want that in your bruschetta. That's what this is for. So we're gonna cut that out. Um, I'm gonna use my knife. If your tomato's really soft, you might be able to use a spoon. I'm gonna grab a spoon. Because we wanna be safe, of course. So if you have a spoon, let me try this. You're gonna wanna just like, kind of like a pumpkin. Oh yeah, this is gonna work nice. You're just gonna wanna, oh sorry, I wasn't even on the camera. You're gonna wanna scoop out the inside of your tomato. If you have a garbage bowl, where is that you guys? You kind of gotta yank it, but spoon works. And just kind of scrape all the seeds and the juice out. So you have a little, look, a little baby bowl. Okay, so you're gonna do that with both of your tomatoes. I have to use the knife at the top because the top of my tomato is really hard. So I'm just kind of cutting like where the stem is and then I'm gonna take over with the spoon. Okay, The worst thing that happens, you guys, is you rip your tomato. It don't matter, you're gonna cut it in a minute anyway. So if your tomato rips, or if you're having trouble getting the seeds out, don't worry about it. Four empty tomato halves. I'm gonna rinse my hands, I'm dripping, dripping with tomato juice. I like to wash my hands a lot, you guys. Oh, look, cute kitchen. 
chicken pot. <laughs> okay. I'll give you guys another couple of seconds to get your tomatoes seeded, and then we'll talk about chopping. You got time. So even if you're not done, you can watch me chop, and then you can keep going. Anyways, good. Let me end this up. Okay, so um, I'm just going to show. I'm going to demonstrate. Now you have this nice empty tomato. I'm going to lay mine face down on the cutting board and kind of just going to push on a little bit. And you're just going to cut some strips. They do not have to be perfect because it is a, you know, you're cutting a rainbow here. So when you get to the curvy edges, I like to turn them and just do the best you can. Now I've got this weird part. It's like lift. Um, if you, you can flatten it and then you can cut this baby into strips. Here's the secret, friends. Make a bridge. Those of you that have been in my cooking classes before, make a bridge across your tomato and the knife goes in between your fingers. That way you can hold the thing still, but you're not trying to, you know, your fingers aren't right next to the blade. So now you're going to have this little pile of, um, I have tomato juice on my face for making tomato lips. <laughs> you have a pile of tomato strips. You're going to take these little babies and just cut them into little chunks. Here's my chunks. You want them small-ish? No gigantic. You don't have to make like microscopic cuts or anything. There you go. One strip got me five, six pieces, something like that. That's what we're going to do. We're going to just chop up all these strips and get a nice bowl full of tomatoes. Let me do one more half just in case. Lay flat. Hold the top so it doesn't slide on you. And just kind of cut some strips. When you get to the edge, you can flatten it. And then you make that bridge over the top. Cut down the center. And you have strips. They almost look like bell peppers. You guys know how I feel about bell peppers. And then this little part, I don't like that part. If you don't like that part either, cut it off. Throw it in your garbage bowl. If you have a garbage bowl, did I mention that I recommend the garbage bowl? Then cut those off. So you can do it however you want. If you want to cut all your strips first, you can. And then you can do all your chunks. Then you can do one half at a time, whatever you want to do. And once you have your strips, if you're feeling fancy, you can put a couple of them together at once and cut through a couple of them at once and just really go for it. Or Cut them one at a time. Up to you. One more time, let me show you how small my tomatoes are. Little babies. It's kind of like what you would put on a salad, right? And you can use your knife as a scooper. Oh, that's too big. You can use your knife as a scooper to scoop them into your hand. Scoop them off the edge, whatever. Oh, no, you did not try to get in my bruschetta. So that's what we're going to do for a minute. We're going to chop these tomatoes. I'm going to go rinse off my hands, my tomato juice hands. Okay. Mm-hmm. Look at you guys rocking and rolling out there with your tomatoes. Nice. I have my little, this is our order. You should see the amount of notes I take. Check. Good. We'll wait for a couple more people to let me know they're done, and we will move on. We're going to do our basil next. So if you want to get your basil, I just got a little baby basil. You guys don't need a ton of basil. Oh, it smells so good. Is this what Italy smells like? Who's been to Italy? My mom has. Does Italy smell like basil? <laughs> oh, it's 
smells so good. Were you growing in Italy? <laughs> no, it's grown in Pleasanton. That's okay. Mm, so good. Basil. All we need are the leaves. So we don't even need a lot. So um, you're going to just kind of pinch the stem off and get yourself some leaves. Go for the big ones, you might as well, because you might as well, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it just smells so delicious. I'm just going to do like four or five, I guess. Man, cute. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You can have more basil. Oh, just, it smells like heaven. Now I'm like, I want more basil. You're going to make a little stack. See how I'm making a little stack? That's what you want. You want to stack your leaves all together. Okay. I can't stop. <laughs> okay, stop it. Stop. That's like way too much. Okay. And then you're going to want to get, we're not going to use this for a little bit. So we're going to put this, once we chop it, into some little thing. Like you have a little dish or a little something, something. That's what you want. Let me see what I'm going to use. What am I going to use? Ah, that's funny. Those are too small. Oh, Carolyn, you can totally use your Pampered Chef Bowl. <laughs> the Pampered Chef Bowl. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, Robin. Unless that's Brian that put that. Either one of you, I'm really sorry. Um, a smallish container. It's just something that you can dump out later. Um, maybe I'll use my fancy one because I just got it in there. So a uh, little bowl to put your basil in. So for those of you that may still be working on tomatoes, stop everything and watch the basil for a second. What you're gonna do? All stacked up, right? We got our basil leaves all stacked up. You're gonna roll it. You're gonna roll it. And I think I'm gonna roll it. I don't wanna roll it. I'm gonna roll it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long way. So it's here long. So I'm going, oh actually, it's just really the short way. You're gonna roll it the short way, like a little, like a little cigarette. <laughs> so you have the stem at the bottom and the tip at the other end. Roll it tight. There we go. It's going to be weird and wacky, but that's how you're going to roll it. So there's the stem and there's the tippity top. So roll that up nice and tight, nice and tight. And then the chopping part is pretty darn easy. You use the same knife from your tomato. I think I just put a tomato on the floor. And you're just going to do little baby slices. Little baby slices. They're going to look like this. Come here. Like that. Okay, and you're gonna plop that in your little dish, container, whatever you found. And that's it for the basil. Pretty easy. You just kind of gotta hold that roll real tight. And you want it teeny, because you're gonna eat it. You wanna, you don't wanna be chewing on a leaf later. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Looks like you just made basil confetti. That's it. And it says two tablespoons worth. Whatever. If you feel like measuring, you can. I'm not going to measure. Do I feel like I have enough? Yeah. Yeah, sure. No basil. So that's it. That's literally, you guys, here's what's so great. For our chicken dinner, besides the cooking, this is all the prep for the chicken part. Isn't that so great? Woo! So good. So I'm going to set this over here. We're not going to use it for a little bit. We're going to set it over there. Yes, you can use anything. Hermana, and honestly, if you have dry basil, that would be good. Um, or Italian seasoning is just fine. Like in my spice drawer, I have basil leaves. So you could just use this. 
But if you don't have this, Italian seasoning is just fine. It's just fine. It has basil in it, so you'll be good. Basil, basil, I love you. Okay, friends, the next part is we're gonna prep whatever veggies you got for the side. What did I tell you? I said zucchini or green beans or both. I have both because I love veggies. So whatever veggies you got for yourself, we're gonna prep these babies so that they're ready to go. So I think I'm gonna do one zucchini. Oh, stay here, baby. And some green beans. And I'll go through both of them in case you have, so that no matter what you have, we talk about it. So go ahead and rinse off whatever you're using. Where's my little strainer? That's the funniest little strainer. It's a little pop-up, baby. Kind of annoying. Put some green beans in here. There we go. And my zook rinsing. All right. So I'm gonna go over the green beans first because they're gonna fall and it's gonna drive me nuts. And I think I want a little bowl to put them in. <laughs> Because that's how I am. Mm, I need bigger than that. Okay, so for the green beans, we are going to, we've done this before, friends. We're going to snip off the ends and you can just snap them with your fingers. And then if they're big and long, this one's not, then you're going to break it in half. So snap, snap. This one will break in half. Boop. If they're bendy, you can use a knife. Boop, boop, that's it. This is like, this to me is one of those kitchen tasks that I really like doing because it's kind of mellow. It's like therapeutic. You have to think about it. And you don't have to be worried about hurting yourself because it's a green bean. All right, so green bean people, that's what you're going to do. The zucchini people, you take your zucchini, you're going to cut off the end, you're going to cut off the other end. And then I'm gonna cut it into chunks like slices. Kind of thicker slices, I think. Oh yeah. They're about this thick. And then I'm probably gonna cut these in half because honestly, I don't wanna eat a slice of zucchini like this. It's too big for my face. So I'm just gonna cut it in half. Is that what I want? If you wanna cut it in half again, you can. There's no rule. You cut it how you want. I'm gonna throw it with my green bean. So I'm just gonna make a big pile of veggies. So that's what we're gonna do. Cut these suckers up. Oh, I still want to put the whole zucchini in there. Cut them in half. When I get to the middle and those slices are really big, I think I'm gonna cut it in half again. So I'm gonna have quarters for my zucchini. So that's what we're doing. Chopping veggies, breaking veggies. <laughs> Gotta have some greens with our din din, right? What'd you guys get while well, you're working? But if someone's typing for you and you're not working and they're not working, tell your secretary to let me know. The person that does Michael shoving up broccoli, that's totally fine. It's green. Honestly, you guys, you can do whatever vegetable you want. I actually really want an onion. But for those of you that have cooked with me, I take forever to cook an onion. Maybe I should start it. I wanted an onion in here. Oh well. It's gonna take forever. Um, so zucchini for smirky, yeah, anything is fine. I actually have Brussels sprouts in my fridge. I was thinking about grabbing those too, but I could be here all night just cooking veggies, cutting veggies. Oh, my mom did get Brussels sprouts. Delish. No matter what you got, we're gonna cook it the same. So with your broccoli, I would just cut it up into like, you know, bite sized chunks. Uh, if you're not opposed to it, oh good, Nikki. If you're not opposed to it with the broccoli, use the stems. Like, cut them into like smaller chunks than the head. They're so good for you. 
The part that's in the stem of the broccoli is like ridiculously good for you, and most people don't eat that. But it is good, good, good. So rinse off your knife, rinse all your stuff, and we will move on. Amanda, did you find a veggie in a can? <laughs> Hopefully. If not, you'll be okay. You're making chicken. Why did I still bring my spoon back? I don't need a spoon again. Okay, rocking and rolling, baby. Michael's done. Katina's done with green beans. Oh, good. Hermana found frozen mixed veggies. Perfect. And you can honestly cook those the way we're going to cook these. So, or you can just them in the microwave. But whatever you want to do. We're going to do our peaches. We're going to do our peaches. So, you were supposed to get two peaches. Wait until you guys see the size of these peaches. Look at this. It's like almost as big as that frying pan. It's like, is this what the, this, this is James and the Giant Peach right here. There might be a whole family living in here. So get your peaches. We're going to wash these babies off. Uh -huh. And, oh, you want to wash them and dry them. Just a paper towel. I'm tired of seeing my kitchen towel. Because that's how I do. Um, and when we serve them, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to put them in. You can put them on a plate. You can put them in a bowl. Later on, you're basically each person gets a half a peach. So um, if you're making for four people, you can probably put them in four bowls now. But you're going to take it back out later. So I think I'm just going to put mine. <laughs> Why is this the hardest decision? I'm just going to put mine in a little bowl. Stop thinking so hard, Jeb. It's not a big deal. <laughs> not a big deal. So, peach prep. Oh, I need to wash my peaches. Hold on. God, these things are gigantic. Look at the size of these peaches. Gigantic. I'm going to use my little reusable kitchen napkin. To dry my peaches in my hands. How many kinds of cloth can I be using at the same time? I mean, yes, this one has chicken. How many kinds of things can I be using at the same time? Apparently a lot. Okay, I'll put you there. Oh, I can put these away. <gasps> my favorite. Putting away. All right. Peaches. So many of you know, inside of a peach is a pit. Sometimes cutting a peach in half is harder than it needs to be. So I'm going to just right now wish all of you peach luck. And let's hope that this is easy for all of us. Worst case scenario, your peach may get a little mangled. It's fine. It's going to the pan. So what I do is I'm going to lay it down on my cutting board. Put it stem side down so it's not rolling, right? Because we put it on the side, it's going to roll everywhere. So pit throw it or stem side down. And I'm just going to cut at the top. And then you'll feel when you hit the pit. And then you're just going to roll it. So keep your fingers out of the way and just roll it. The other nice thing about a peach is there's like a zipper. So you can follow that around. Okay? So once you get it all the way around, in a dream world, you guys, Pray for me. I pray for you. In a dream world, you grab both halves and you twist. <gasps> oh my God. This is a perfect peach. I'm so happy. I hope this happens for you. Oh my gosh. Yes. 
You're going to cut in half and put them in the bowl. Make sure you pick out your, um, your pit. You may have to use a spoon or a knife. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I hope that happens for you guys. Here we go. Peach number two. All the way around. Rolling, rolling to the pit. Oh, okay. It was almost perfect, except my pit broke in half. So I'm going to pick my pit out. <laughs> it's like an almond inside. I love an almond. I'm not going to eat that. Let me use my teaspoon. I happen to have this metal teaspoon sitting here. Let's see if this works. To dig it out. You may have to dig it out, guys. I'm gonna use a spoon instead of a knife so I don't cut myself, but I'm just trying to dig it out. There we go. Got him. Okay, I kind of did it like I did the tomato. I just dug it out. Whoa. <laughs> Landed right in the bowl. <gasps> Yay! Smirky got good peaches too. If it doesn't peel, like if it doesn't pop in half like that, you guys, you gotta finagle it. You just gotta work it. I have had so many peaches not do that for me. <laughs> like just was like I wanted to cry. Oh, that is gorgy. Gorgy, gorgy, gorgy. So this is it. This is all we are doing with these peaches. And I'm going to set mine way over here. So we don't need them. I'm going to rinse off my teaspoon because it wasn't meant for peaches. Okay. And then I'll wait a moment. So we just have one other thing we're going to prep before we start cooking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is so great, friends. Yeah, this is so good. Okay. Happy. How's your peaches coming? You guys getting lucky? Getting lucky? Brian, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Mm hmm. How's those peaches? Yay! Hopefully, hopefully because it's peach season, they're like perfect. Yay, not done yet. No problem, Momo. We'll wait for you. I think, yeah, we just have one other thing we're going to do. Mm hmm I don't even think we need this knife. I think we're done cutting. Let's review. You guys, we killed it. We killed it. We are done with the knife. So it can go. Yay. Garlic, not, oh, well, if you got fresh garlic. But I have it in the jar. <laughs> Ready, freestone peaches, good. What does the garlic say? It's supposed to be minced? Minced. So. It'll be interesting. Good point, Mom. If somebody bought fresh garlic, keep your knife out. If you didn't, or if you have a garlic press, mine's in a jar. That's how I do. Easier. Easier, easier, easier. Okay. How's it coming, Momo? Hermienda, how's your peaches? <laughs> I didn't even sing the song. <gasps> Millions of peaches. Peaches for me. Millions of peaches, peaches for free. Mm -hmm. My favorite, I love that song. Peaches come from a can, they were put there by a man. <laughs> I had a friend that moved out here from Iowa, some of you may remember her. She never had a fresh peach. She really thought they came in a can. <laughs> we take for granted California, I guess. And that we still have, or that we have so much fresh produce. So, Brian, this is really not the place for us to be talking about other programs. We are here to cook. I'm happy to answer emails, or if you come to another program where it's more chatty, that would be great. But here we are trying to stay focused on 
food and cooking. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jordan's done, yay. I'm gonna get us out. Oh, I didn't tell you this in your instruction, but you're gonna need a quarter cup. So if you're done, it's liquid. So um, frozen garlic cubes, that's interesting, that's fun. Um, for the quarter cup, this is a liquid measuring cup, this kind. You can use this kind, but I recommend this kind. So you're gonna need a that, a need of that. <laughs> Good, I just take them just a pit. That's it, Amanda. In half, where do they go? Just cut them in half, take the pit out. Ba bing, bada bang. That's it. So, next is going to be our coconut milk. And I know some of you couldn't find it, or um, you have regular milk, and that's fine. Just milk is fine. Coconut milk is just a little bit thicker, and it's not too Um Frozen garlic at Trader Joe's. Interesting. I'll have to look for it. Anyways, I have a can already open, so let me get my open can. We use a lot of coconut milk in this house. My very hand dandy can cover. <laughs> so you're gonna want to open your can of coconut milk, and then you've got to stir these babies up because it kind of separates a little bit. You can shake it before you open it. And then you're just gonna to wanna to stir and make sure that the liquid is mixed in. You'll notice it's thick. Thick, thick, thick. Oh, I just tried to wipe my fingers on a baggie. Silly. Mm. Okay. So, I guess we don't have to measure this now that I've read the instructions. What it says is a quarter cup plus a coconut milk. So, um, so that's why I had to get this out. But what we're really going to do is just drizzle it onto our peaches after they're cooked. So you don't have to do anything with it, but open the can and stir it up. How convenient. I'll take it. So I'm going to get a spoon and stick it in my can so I have it. But that's it. That's it. I'm so excited. I was going to have us get it measured. If you want to measure a quarter cup of coconut milk, you can. Or you can just pour it right out of the can. I'm going to pour it right out of the dang can. Let's dish it. That is exciting. Thank you, Prep Step, for being so easy. What's that? Peaches are prep. Cool. We just finished step three, you guys. Woo! We have four more left. Let's see here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is make our bruschetta and we're gonna let it sit because it's one of those things that like the longer it sits, all the flavors mix together better. So um, that's what we're going to do next. So hopefully we're all together because everyone was pretty much done with peaches. All you have to do was open a can and stir it. So I'm going to assume we're close. So we're going to get a small bowl to make our bruschetta in. I feel like I'm using every small bowl in the house. That's okay. It's great. It's my bruschetta bowl. So, oh, here's the time that I get to write on the famous whiteboard. So I'm gonna write this out while you guys get your 
your Shadda Mixing Bowl ready. And then off we go. Oh, hold on, silly. If you have garlic, Katina, for the coconut milk, it says a quarter cup, but also we're just gonna drizzle it so you don't really have to measure it. So I just have my can open and ready. If you have coconut milk in a, like a milk container, just have it ready. If you wanna measure it, you can, it's a quarter cup, but it says, or as much as you want, so, okay. If you have garlic that needs to be chopped or smashed or minced, do that. I don't, so I can't show you how. I have minced garlic. So if you have garlic that needs to be chopped, chop it. Chop it, chop it. Or get the little, you know, the garlic crusty thing. Where are you, baby? Garlic crusty? If you have fresh, if you have a fresh one. Okay, here we go. What am I doing? Okay, I'm gonna make a giant assumption that when I'm done writing, we're ready to make bruschetta. So if you're not ready, let me know. You're just all you really need right now is a bowl, a teaspoon, and the stuff I'm going to tell you in a minute. <laughs> oh, I guess I can tell you now. You're going to need your olive oil. Why can't I spell this word? Your olive oil, your balsamic vinegar, and your salt and pepper. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, that no glare. Ah! Is it legible, Jack? Jack's gonna type all this in the chat also. So, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, your tomato, your basil, which should be sitting right with you, your garlic. And salt and pepper. Okay, ready? Here we go. We're dumping tomatoes in the big bowl. Tomatoes in. We're dumping basil in. It's like a cooking show now, you guys, because we got everything prepped. We're so good. I'm gonna put these bowls in the sink. Makes it look like we're done. Okay. One clove of garlic, which for me, that means a half a teaspoon. I love garlic, you guys. I'm just going to put some in. Yes, spoon. If you want to do officially, just do what you want. I love garlic. So, I'm gonna put a scoop of garlic, because <laughs> I love it. You're gonna want this spoon anyway. Okay, garlic. Next is one teaspoon olive oil. So get your olive oil and your teaspoon. Put that in the bowl. Everything's going in the same bowl. This is easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. You will need your olive oil again. So just keep it, keep it close. Tap it out. Then balsamic vinegar. One teaspoon. Same teaspoon. This lid I've been unscrewing this thing for 10 minutes. There we go. My golly, Miss Molly. I love balsamic vinegar. Ugh, oh, smells so good. Tap, tap. Give it a smell. 
You don't smell it yet. It's like tangy though, so don't breathe too deep. And then salt and pepper, just a pinch. Just a little pinchy. I don't really have a pincher, I have a shaker, so I'm just gonna shake a little bit. Shake a little bit of salt or pepper, whatever this stuff is. You can always, the nice thing about salt and pepper, do a little bit when you eat your dinner. If you feel like it needs some salt and pepper, just sprinkle it on there. And then you're gonna stir it all up. We just made bruschetta. A lot of times, like you just put this on like little toasted slices of bread. That's where it's at. So this is officially bruschetta right here. If you guys ever see like bruschetta on a menu or whatever, this is it. <sighs> Smells so good. This is what's going on top of our chicky. Delish. So we're just gonna get this all mixed up and then we're gonna set it off to the side to let the flavor soak on in to the basil and the tomato. So if you didn't get the measurements, I'll tell you again. You're gonna dump all your tomato, dump all your basil, some garlic. If you have fresh, fresh garlic, one clove. If you're using mint, little baby scoop. Um, olive oil, one teaspoon. Balsamic vinegar, one teaspoon. And then a sprinkle of salt and pepper. I just wanna like, I'm with you, Hermanda. I'm starving too, I know you said that earlier. So when you're done, you're just gonna put it off to the side. That's it. So easy, so great. We are gonna use the teaspoon again, but wash it and dry it because we're doing it with something that is powder. And we do not want it to have balsamic vinegar in it. <laughs> so rinse that baby out. Dry it off. Okay. How are we doing in bruschetta? Bro, 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 bruschetta. Bruschetta. How are we doing in bruschetta lamps? Friends, any questions, situations? Are you done? Good to go, Michael Linden says. Yay. I'll drink some water. Mm hmm. That, doesn't it smell so good, right? Mmm, good. Jason's done, Sparky's done, Amber's done, Katina's done, Donnie's done, yay! Jordan's done, good, 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 Nikki's done, yay! Oh, you tasted it, Momo, I'm jealous. <laughs> Tastes good, huh? <laughs> smart man, smart man. <laughs> Savannah's done, nice. Good, everybody. Good, good, good. Amanda's done, Jeff's done. Yay, okay, good. I'm gonna wipe this off so I can see my file again. We'll come back to it when we need it. Okay, okay. Okay, huh. everything was fine until I pumped it again. All right, good job, us. Now we are going to start our, we're just gonna start cooking. We have three things to cook. They shouldn't take too long. Um, the only thing that's, here's the thing. We're going to start the veggies first because they can kind of cool down. Then we're going to do the chicken and then we're going to do the peaches. And I want you to hopefully have your peaches and your chicken stay warm, right? But the peaches can cool down. You can always just like turn the burner back on or whatever. Um, but that's the goal. So that's why we did it this way. So that, um, we can have hot dinner. So. Good job, everybody. We're going to start. Do I need your garbage bowl? I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. No, you're in the way. Okay. We're going to start with your medium pan. Medium pan. If you, oh, I'm going to get my garlic back out, you guys. If you have the minced garlic in a jar, 
I highly recommend it. I'm going to use mine again. Let me get yet another spoon. Oh, wait. Oh, ah, no. Stop it, Jen. Stop being lazy and get a spoon. It's fine. So what you're going to need is your garlic. If you have it, if you have fresh garlic and you want to chop another one, do it. If you have garlic powder, that'd be fine. Um, but olive oil, garlic, no veggies, and something to stir with. I'm going to use this thing. Little spatula, scoopy dealy, whatever. So get those things ready. Veggies should be done. I know they're done. Olive oil, we just used it. Garlic if you want, or garlic powder, or whatever. And here we go. See you later, Brian. Thanks for stopping by. So we're going to pour a little bit of olive oil in our pan. I'm just going to do, I like to drizzle it everywhere because I have this fun bottle thing. Just a little bit of olive oil in your pan. Make a nice little, you know, shiny. And then let's turn it to medium. Ooh, I just got pickle. Medium. Let's do medium, high-ish. So I'm going to put mine on six. This is, this is not a recipe, friends. This is cooking veggies the gen way. <laughs> I'm going to turn our burner on. A little higher than medium. Let this oil get a little bit warm and kind of spread around the pan. If you do not have rubber coated handles, get a pot holder. Okay, so we're gonna put a scoop of garlic in if you want to. If you're using garlic powder, don't put that in yet. But if you're using minced garlic, you can put that in now. I'm gonna leave you out spoon just in case. Goodness gracious. So you're gonna want to spread your garlic around in the pan. Let it get a little warm. You'll start to smell it real good. If you're using garlic powder, I'll tell you when to put it in. Don't worry. I don't really need that. I feel weird putting my cutting board away because it's like an extra counter. Okay, we're sizzling. So I'm gonna dump the veggies in. You're just going to stir these around, get them coated with the olive oil and the garlic. If you're using garlic powder, what I recommend you do is after you get everything coated with the oil, and you'll know because it's shiny, then sprinkle some on there and then stir it up again. So we're just going to coat these little babies. Mix them around, mix them around, and then spread them out. Make sure they have a nice, you know, we want everybody touching the bottom of the pan as possible. You don't want a mound in the middle because the people on the top can't feel the heat. You gotta spread them around the bottom of the pan. So everybody gets some heat. And I like to play with my food. So I just stir it a lot. And you can let it sit. But this is truly it for our veggies, you guys. So I'm gonna flatten my out and I'll walk away. <laughs> and we'll walk away from veggies. I'm gonna rinse this bowl out. And dry it and put it away. Because all I had in it was veggies. There was no juice. No sauce, no oil, no nothing. If that stresses you out, just throw it in your sink. It's not going anywhere. It'll be waiting for you when it's dishes time. They're steaming. You're just going to stir them every once in a while. Maybe flip them over. When you flip, just kind of turn the wrist. I just lost the zucchini. Come back. Good thing I just cleaned my stove right before class in case you guys could see down in here. If it's spitting, if your oil's starting to splash, which mine's trying to, 
Just turn your burner down a little bit so it doesn't get too excited. You don't want to have the oil splash you. Hopefully you don't have that much oil in the pan anyway. So let me show you what mine's looking like. There you go. Cook oh, no, oh, cook garlic. It's amazing. Oh, what is my problem? I'm just losing zucchinis. Sorry. I'm sorry, zucchini. I'll bring my garbage bowl back, apparently. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't play with my food so much. So depending on what vegetables you made. Oh, Hermanda, with your frozen veggies, same. Hopefully you just follow along. So you can also just throw them in the micro. Um, for the zucchinis, they will probably cook a little faster than the green beans. So they're just a softer vegetable. Um, what we're going to want to do is, I'm going to get a fork. That's how I test when mine are done. You just kind of stab one. And if it goes in pretty easy, then it's done. The green beans, they're going to take longer. And honestly, everybody likes their veggies a different way. So if you like your veggies like super cooked and like soggy, you got to cook them a little longer. If you just want to take the crunch off, then you can turn them off as soon as you like how done they are. I like mine. I don't know. I guess I like them on the softer side. I want my fork to go in nice and easy. I don't want to have to be like gnawing on a green bean. But this is personal preference, my friends. So check with a fork. You can even pull one out, let it cool off, and eat it. If you really want to get wild about it. Your green beans will start to get darker, shinier. Well, they're close. My zucchinis are soft, though. They're getting there. All I smell is garlic, and it smells like heaven. Delish, delish, delish. Is everybody's house smelling amazing? <laughs> Stop playing, Jen. Okay. I just like to play. I'll just look at my notes instead. Let's see what we're doing next. Nice. This will be great. It's going to be great. Perfect. You guys, we are killing it tonight. Killing it. Woo! I'm going to play with my food again. Because I can. Because my mom's not here. She is. She is. But she can't stop me. Okay, let me check it. Oh, my nose is so itchy. Okay, let me check you. Zucchinis, great. Green beans, close. The other thing is, you guys, these are going to sit on the stove. We're going to just kind of push them to the back. Um, and so they'll stay warm and they'll keep cooking a little bit. So you don't want to make them mush, I don't think, unless you like your veggies mush. Maybe you do. But like mine are pretty good. When I stab them, then I just like pop them off on the side of here. 
You don't have to touch anything. Let me show you that crazy little technique. Stab it, and then just go, boop. I think I'm gonna turn mine off. And just kinda let it soak up. My garlic's getting really crispy down in here. So I'm really scraping that off and tossing it on my veggies. Oh, so good. Yeah, I'm gonna turn mine off. It'll stay warm and it'll keep cooking a little bit. So keep that in mind as you're approaching the end. I'll wait for you. No worries. No one gets left behind. Not in this group, not in the TRS family. Okay, friends, that's what my done, that's what my done pile of veggie looks like. Got a little brown. Mostly that's garlic. And I'm gonna screw it to the back. And it'll just be ready for din din. What is all over the place? Garlic. <laughs> Apparently, I got excited with some garlic. Need to rinse this off. You guys let me know how you're doing. Remember, it's gonna cook a little bit more while it sits here. So it's not done just because you turn it off. That is a fact, Jack. Ah, Jack's here. Okay, let's review. It's perfect, friends. Schmerky's done, Michael's done, Katina's done, Amber's done. Ride zucchini, nice, Savannah. Very good, Nikki's done, Jordan's done. Good. Good, good, good. I'm so itchy. Okay, gotta wash my hands again, scratch my eye. Cooking with Dan, cooking with Dan. Who wants to write me a theme song? I need you guys to write me a theme song. <laughs> Jeffrey's done, good. Do we have any musicians in the house? Write us a theme song, cooking with TRS, chefs in quarantine. <laughs> we'll have something to play. And I need to start um, with the videos that, I'm gonna, that I put on YouTube. I need to start editing them, so like, <laughs> We can speed up some of the parts and people can just press, you know, pause. But we need music. Almost done. Good. So the veggies are like done, done. Literally, they're done, done. So when you dish your plate, just right out of that pan onto the plate. If you want to heat them back up, depending how long this part takes us, just put the burner to low and like toss it around. If you have a lid for that pan, you can put a lid on it. But they will smush a little bit because then they're getting steamed. So I'm just leaving mine. They're just sitting right there. They'll be good. How are you doing, Hermanda? How are you doing, Shandy ladies? You guys ready? We got lots of readies. Mm-hmm. Andrea, how are you doing, darling? Darling? Mom, how you doing? Jason, mm -hmm. I'm like trying to figure out who's, who's on the list. Done, done. Good, good, good. Andrea's like really done, like done, caps. Got it. <laughs> hey, everything's good, perfect. Okay, friends. Chicken time, chicken time. So good, Donnie's done, good. So you're gonna get your big pan, your big king daddy. If you have a lid, great. If not, I didn't used to have a lid. I would just lay a cookie sheet on top. So we're gonna need a lid. If you don't have a lid, get a cookie sheet or something that you can use for a lid, okay? My pan is wet. Maybe I just did the dishes right before cooking time. Okay, 
So let's get out our stuff, shall we? We're going to need our chicken. Let me go get my chicken. Get your chicken. Let me get my cheese while I'm in here too. Chicken and cheese. Let's have a chicken discussion, shall we? So the recipe called for officially chicken cutlets. I don't know if I've ever seen a chicken cutlet at the grocery store. So what I got was thin sliced chicken breast. Hopefully you guys were able to find thin sliced chicken breast. If you did not, and you have thick fatty chicken breast, you're gonna to wanna to slice them in half the long way so that you have thinner pieces of chicken. Because you don't want these to cook for eternity. You want them to be thin. So um, hopefully you were able to find thin. What we're gonna do, I'm thinking, let's get a plate. Okay, so let's have a chicken discussion. With chicken, everything that touches raw chicken is now contaminated. And so you don't want it to touch a bunch of stuff. So, but we do need to season our chicken. And so I'm gonna get a plate to put my chicken on. But it's one of those things where if you touch the chicken, you wash your hands. It goes on a plate, it goes in the sink. Like, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna tell you this a thousand times and just go, mm -hmm, we know Jen, thank you. So I'm gonna get a biggish plate to prep my chicken on. I don't know if this is big enough. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Oh, this fork, how convenient. So, before you open your chicken, be ready. Because once you finish touching this chicken, you go straight to that sink and you wash your hands. So, I'm gonna use the fork that I used to check my veggies with. I'm just gonna rip into this container here. And I'll show you what my chicken looks like. I don't even know yet. Yep, let's go. <laughs> so mine's just a little baby skinny piece of chicken. So if your chicken is fat, you're gonna wanna cut them in half through the fatty part. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay these babies on this plate. How many do I have? I have four, how nice. Perfect. And just kind of spread them out. They don't have to be like beautiful, but you just don't want them on top of each other. So throw this thing away and wash your hands. I'm going straight to the garbage. Not even the garbage bowl. And this fork went inside my chicken container. So he's going to the sink. He's dead to me. Warm water. 20 seconds. Cue the theme song. I just got really quiet. Oh, you can't even see me. Hi. Sometimes I have my thing turned so you guys can see the thing. Okay. So now what we need is salt, pepper, and paprika. Uh, you can pound your chicken if you want to, but there shouldn't be any reason to pound your chicken. If you've got fat, fat chicken and you don't want to cut it in half, I guess you can pound it. But um, it's up to you, I suppose. I would just cut it. So salt, pepper, and paprika. Paprika is what you need for the chicken. Now we get all this open to sprinkle setting. So we're going to touch chicken. So all of my things have sprinkly. Sprinkly, sprinkly. Okay. I'm going to do this real quick. So if you're still getting your chicken on a plate, it's fine. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle salt, pepper, and paprika on our chicken. Uh, I wouldn't go too crazy. I'm just going to do it. Uh, uh huh. It says salt and pepper to taste. You can put it in your hand if you want to. Wait, what hand do I want to use? <laughs> I'll just go like this. You can put it in your hand if you want to and sprinkle. That way you kind of have more control. And if you get too much, 
to the starting garbage bowl. So you're going to sprinkle that on there. You're going to sprinkle your pepper. And you're just going to sprinkle your paprika. I'll show you what mine looks like in a sec. With these, my secret, my thing. I'm touching chicken with this thumb. What do you do? I just tap with my finger. And that way I can kind of control how it's coming out. I'm doing a nice coating because I want to have flavor. Can you see how that's going on there? Mm-hmm. My finger's getting tired. Oh, see, I started shaking and now I got all crazy. So then what I recommend you do is one hand is your chicken hand. The other hand is your shaker hand. So figure out which one you like. I'm going to pat this in here with my chicken hand. Pat, pat, pat. Make sure it's in there. And we're going to flip it over. You have a chicken hand now. This is a weird flap of skin on my chicken. Flip them over, and you're going to do the other side. You can wash your hand if you need to, or you can just do one hand for one and one hand for the other. Sprinkle the salt. If you were putting it in your hand, you can put the salt in your chicken hand. That's all matter. And then sprinkle the pepper. And then sprinkle the paprika. Come on, paprika. There we go. Come on, baby. This is the one that's trying to make my hand tired. Okay. I'm going to win. I got control. I got it. And I can close all these. If your hand, chicken hand, you can't close it yet, that's fine. I'm back to it. But take your chicken hand and pat it in there. Pat it in there. And then go wash your chicken hands. Twenty seconds. Warm water. Make sure you get under your fingernail. I have chicken parts under my fingernail. Okay, our chicken is. Ready! Woo! So good. If you're done, you can put away, you can put all this away. Is that true? It's totally true. Yep. The salt, the pepper, the paprika, all done. You can put it away. How's it going, friends? Spices are on both sides. I did both sides. So flip them over and do the other side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you're done, you can get out your cheese, your mozzarella, and get it ready. I'm just going to open my package. I found dairy free cheese today. I was so happy. Uh huh. Now I just have to read about my cheese. My cheese. Nice. Plant based. Cool. All right. I wonder what it tastes like. 
There's our teeth. Ooh. All right. Let me know when your chicken's ready. Momo's ready. Tatina's ready. Nikki's ready. My mom's ready. Michael's ready. Good, good. Donnie, good. Nice. Katina, there's no way. I love you more. Jason's ready. Good. Okay, friends. So, I'm going to use tongs, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use tongs. So, you can either use a spatula or use tongs. We do have to flip our chicken. So, I just like tongs. I have more control this way. So, we are going to... Oh! This is where the butter comes in. You need a tablespoon of butter, which is weird to me, but that's okay. So you need olive oil and butter. I just happen to have a tablespoon of butter sitting right here, how convenient. But let me show you the butter secret. If you're using a stick of butter on the side of the stick are little tablespoons. So you just chop with your knife right on that line and you got yourself a tablespoon of butter. If you have a butter in a tub, you can use your tablespoon if you need to. I'm not a measurer when it comes to this kind of stuff, so I'm just scraping this right on my plate. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to put our, a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter in this pan. I'm just trying to decide if I'm really measuring. No, I'm not. I'm just going to put some olive oil in the pan. If you want to measure, it's a tablespoon and a tablespoon of butter in the pan. Flop. Looks good to me. Okay. We're going to turn our pan to medium high. So in my head, that's like seven. That's what medium high looks like to me. We're gonna put that in there and we're gonna watch our butter melt. I like to tip it around the pan, swirl it around the olive oil and the butter. Put her back down, don't play, Jen. Your veggies are in the way. We are officially done with the olive oil too, my friends. So you can move the olive oil. If it's in your way, which mine is, you can move it. Okay. Butter is melting nicely. We're going to swirl it around the pan. Give everybody a nice coating here. So a tablespoon of olive oil. There's like butter wrapper in there. <laughs> Oops. Tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of butter. Once it's melted, my just melted. Getting a little bubbly. You want it to get a little bit bubbly. Then you're going to put your chicken in your pan. In a perfect world, it all fits. <laughs> if it doesn't all fit, you'll have to put some in, cook them, take them out, and put some in. If you have to do it that way, get a clean Wait. So I'm gonna see if all mine will fit. Here we go. Chicken in the pan. Oh, they're all gonna fit. This is a Mondo pan. I could even fit another one. I could fit myself in here. So chicken plate. If you got it all in, put this baby in the sink in the dishwasher somewhere. It's contaminated, and the chicken touched the side of my hand, so I'm gonna wash my hands. Again, we need a hand washing thong, a hand washing thong. Okay, so this chicken will cook pretty fast because it's skinny. So we're supposed to let it sit. Don't touch it, Jen. Three to four minutes and then we're gonna flip it. So what's going to happen is you're going to watch your chicken 
kind of starting to turn white around the edges. And we're going to watch it. While you're waiting and watching, you can get your bruschetta mix from earlier, your tomato basil mix. Give it a stir. This is going in here too. Oh. Mm, makes me happy. You can get this ready. Have your cheese at the ready. So how long your chicken takes to cook depends on how thick your chicken is. So the secret to cook chicken is you want it cooked all the way through, no shiny pinkness. So um, I like to cut into mine because that's what I do. I think I'm gonna get a plate. I'm gonna get a plate so that I'm ready. Get a clean plate. Uh, mozzarella cheese is what was on the shopping list. Mozzarella. The only reason I'm pulling this baby out is so I can check my chicken with it. And then honestly, I'll probably use it for dinner plate. Hey, garbage bowl. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one of my pieces of chicken is like really, really white already. So I'm gonna flip him over because it's a skinny, skinny piece of chicken. So see how white this is? Here, let me bring this over here. See how white this is already around the edges? So I'm gonna flip him. But some of my other ones, they're not quite as ready. So you may have some that cook faster than others, but when they start to get pretty white, give them a flip. You can always flip them back. But for me, it's like when the white starts coming up the side, and it's about halfway up the side, then it's about halfway cooked. Then you're going to flip them over, put them down the other side. My mom always told me a watched pot never boils. Does a watched chicken cook? That's what I'm doing. I'm watching my chicken cook. <laughs> Okay, I'm flipping another one. I have three flipped over and one that's just not. I'm going to move him so he's on the heat more. If you think your chicken is done, I would recommend taking out a piece of chicken, putting them on a plate, and cut them in half. Or, if you really want to get fancy, you can use a meat thermometer. I don't like using a meat thermometer. I just don't like it. I don't always trust myself that I'm putting it in the right spot. But if you love a meat thermometer and you just really want to use it, go for it. You want it to be 165 degrees. I just want to cook mine all the way through. That's all I want. Okay, my last one's getting flipped. Let's check my first one. So my first one, it looks pretty good, but when I went to look at it, the side right here is still pink. So you ain't done. You can't fool me. We're coming. We're doing good, friends. It's going to be so good. Woo! Hey, sorry, I was reading our peaches recipe. Undisturbed. Well, apparently they have never met me. So I'm gonna get a knife, check my chicken. I'm gonna take out the mediumist piece. <laughs> Is that a word, mediumist? Yeah. I feel like that's this guy. And I'm gonna cut him right in the middle, the thickest part. That's where you wanna cut if you're gonna do it my way. Oh, ha! Check this baby out. This is raw chicken. See how pink it is in there? We're not done. Back in you go. It looks good on the outside. 
If he ain't done, he was one of my thicker pizzas. So we're still going. But we're close. I'm hungry. Hungry. Oh, I was gonna make you guys a survey. Here's the two questions I wanna know. If you have somebody typing for you, or you can type, or you can send me an email later, or whatever, here's the two questions I wanna know. One is, what is on the back of my ankle? One is, do you guys have blenders? I found this like frozen lemonade, like frothy drink thing. That, oh, it just screams end of summer. But you use a blender. So I'm curious if you guys have blenders. And the second question is, um, could, are you available to start like a half an hour earlier? Like if we started at 4.30 so that we could eat by like 6.30 or 7? Because it usually takes us about two hours. So I'm going to, I really meant to make a survey for us, you guys, that I could just put in here like we've done before on the little poll. But I forgot. I forgot. So those are the two things I want to know. Blender and starting at 4.30, do you like that idea? Are you available? When we're in person, we have to worry about traffic, you know? But we don't have traffic anymore, not all of us. Some of us do. Jeffrey has a blender, yes, to all of us. I should take notes. Blender. Yes, no, early. 4.30 is fine. <laughs> It's a sea turtle. What? Yes, a blender, and we can start earlier. <laughs> okay, okay, good to know. Lots of yeses. Good. Okay, I'm going to check another piece of chicken. Back to what we're here for. <laughs> I'm going to check my biggest one this time because I feel lucky. You cut him open. Oh, we're so close. Okay, you guys, in my opinion, this chicken is not done. See that? It's still going. 430 is good. Okay, so I think we'll do that. We have one more in August. And I don't think we can start early for that one because not everybody gets the email. And so the flyer says five. But for September, we'll start at 430. You may want to flip your chicken back over to the original side. I have one that might be done though. You've got to be done. You done? I don't mess around with raw chicken, you guys. You don't want it. Oh yeah, he's a done one. Yeah, he's a done one. I'm gonna leave him out for a minute. If you've got one that's done, pull them out because you don't want them to get all dry. I'm like stirring my chicken. Yes, you have a blender. Yes, you can do early. Good. Good, mom. I'm glad I didn't steal your blender. I still think it's funny, you guys. I moved out of my house, my mom's house, what, 30, 30 years ago almost? And it's still like, did I steal that when I moved out? <laughs> anyway, all right. Here's what you're gonna do next if you're done. If you're done, done, done. What you're gonna do is turn off your burner. <coughs> turn off your burner. And if you've taken any chicken out, Put it back in. Okay. And you're gonna scoop, you're gonna put on top of your chicken scoops of your bruschetta. And you're gonna pile it on there. It's supposed to be covered. And then on top of that, you're gonna sprinkle your cheese and then you're gonna put the lid on. And your chicken is done. Make sure you check it though. 
And what you guys eat? Raw chicken. You can see inside my pan. Probably not. Let me show you how this is going. Piled it on there. See that? I haven't done one yet. And if it falls off the pan, the chicken into the pan, it's fine. You're going to scoop it out later and put it on your plate. It's probably going to fall off anyways when you take it out of here and put it on your plate. Put it back on top. Maybe the cheese will help keep it on there. I have extra. There's no way I can get all this on here. Can I? Challenge. Or I could just have a bite like Mama did. Because <laughs> it's delicious. Oh my God, this smells like heaven. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna eat this last bite because I can. I'm going in. Oh my God, you guys. It's so good. Okay. I love it when our food comes out good. I never test these recipes in advance, you guys. It's all a wing and a prayer. All right, and then the cheese, you're just going to sprinkle it on the top. If you love cheese, put a lot of cheese. If you don't want a lot of cheese, don't put a lot of cheese. It don't matter. But then you're going to put the cover on. And that is going to melt your cheese. No rush, you guys. You don't have to keep up with me. I'm going first so that you can see what to do. There she is. And then I'm going to put the lid on. And you're going to push it to the side or the back or whatever. And she's gonna melt. Woo! Let me know how you guys are doing. Great. Rinse your hands. Always. Rinse and dishes. Okay. If you didn't get a chance to answer too, please still let me know if you have a blender and um, if you can start at 4.30. Mmm, there's a piece of cheese and the tomatoes. It's delicious. Put the cheese in, good. Just put your lid on. Let it melt, or a cookie sheet, if you need to put a cookie sheet on top, that works just fine. Mm -mm -mm. Yes to both, say the shandies, good. Because sometimes we go until like 7.30, and I know it's kind of late for some of you for dinner. That's still kind of early for me. We eat late. All right, this chicken, this thing has a lot of chicken juice. I'm gonna rinse them off. Okay. How are we doing in there? Oh, good. Thanks, Jordan. When you're done, give me a chicken update. Give me a bop bop. Give me a done. Give me a K. Give me a go. Give me an all set. Whatever sounds fun to type for you so that I know you're ready. All we have left is peaches. Peaches, peaches, peaches. Ah, thanks, Andy. Set. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep my tongs out because I might want these to get my chicken out of the pan. But we don't need our knife that we checked our. Haha, <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> we don't need our knife anymore, except I'm going to keep it to eat my dinner. Why not? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thanks, Michael. Sup, J Dog. Oh, that's not to me. That's to Jordan. That's from Savannah. 
<laughs> that's funny. I was all excited. And maybe that was for me. I'm a J too. <laughs> Jason's good. Michael's good. Savannah's good. Andrea. Yay. Good, good, good. Mom's done. Um, Shandy ladies, Hermanta, you guys let me know. Donnie's done. Good. Most of you are done. Good, good, good. When you go to eat this, you could just turn your burner back on, leave the lid on maybe, and like, if it gets cold. My cheese is not melting, so I'm going to put it back on later. The, the heat, that is. All right, friends. Home stretch. Jeffrey's done. Good. Katina's done. Yay. All right. Home stretch, home stretch. I'm reading. I have read the instructions to make these peaches no less than seven times. But I just am like, wait, what? What are we doing? It's so funny, you guys. We do not prepare these recipes in the order that they tell us to because it's like, turn on the pan. While it's getting warm, wash your peaches, slice your peaches, take the pit out of your peaches, and like the chicken one, the chicken one, heat your pan, season your chicken, do this, do this, do this, and I'm like, no, we're gonna have a fire. We do it in our own order, our own order. Good, Shmerky's done, Shandy are done, good, good, good. Okay, so we're gonna gather. We're gonna gather peaches. There they are. We're gathering, oh, oh, I'm gonna try. Coconut oil. Wait till you see my vat of coconut oil. Coconut oil. Costco, baby. We use this stuff all the time. <laughs> Crazy, it's so big. Okay, coconut oil. What the heck is this spoon from? Garlic, I think. Let's just move you. We don't want you. We want honey. We want cinnamon. And we want the coconut milk. Give them another little stir. The other thing is, so we just cook these babies in the pan real quick. Oh, that's okay, Amanda. We're gonna just start prepping the peaches. You could truly keep the chicken cooking and um, stir your peaches at the same time. When your chicken's done, you just put your bruschetta on top, that tomato mix, and the cheese on top. Put the lid on to let it melt, okay? So, okay, peaches. When they come out of the pan, they're going, that's how you're gonna serve them. So you're gonna really put them like in the bowl you wanna eat them out of. So I'm gonna get two little bowls, because there's only two of us having dinner tonight. But however many people you're giving peaches to, if you have little bowls, that'd be perfect, because then they won't roll away. <laughs> they're round, you know. Um, or you can use a little plate. You can use a Tupperware, it don't matter. But I'm just using two. My other two are just going to stay in the pan. But I'm just getting these ready for when they come out. Okay? So what we're going to do is, peaches, you are in my way. I try to keep everything so clean, and all of a sudden I just have everything in the way. Okay. We are going to turn on our pan to medium. Medium. For me, that's a five. For you, that might be medium. It might be the middle line. I don't know. Medium. And what you want is you want two teaspoons of coconut oil. Write this down. I almost thought of tablespoons. I was getting really excited. Two teaspoons coconut Oil. Do not block my own recipe. There we go. And you're going to put this in your pan. 
And mine's already melted because this stuff melts when it's hot. My house is hot, you know, it's summer. I'm gonna do a little extra because I want to. And then you're just gonna let it spread it around like you were doing with the other stuff. And you're gonna lay your peaches down in here, face down. So that means the cut part goes down in the pan. My peaches are gigantic. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit all these in here. I'm not, I'm gonna cook three. <laughs> and that's fine. So you're going in like this, in the coconut oil. Okay? And we're just cooking them for two minutes. I'm gonna set a timer. Medium heat, remember mine's a five, medium heat. Get the coconut oil out of the way. This is it, friends. We are so close. Okay. It's so funny these measurements. They tell you to measure. But like if I'm not mixing it in the bowl, what if I don't want to use that amount? I use what I like. Extra peat half. I have to keep myself busy, you guys. I want to play with my food. So I'm going to dump out my garbage bowl. <laughs> Give it a rinse. I'm trying not to play with my food. After two minutes, you're going to flip it over. And then they just cook for one minute on the other side. So if you're ahead of me, after two minutes, flip it. I still have 53 seconds. If you put yours in when I put mine in, we still have 53 seconds. Ooh. I want to touch it. <laughs> Ooh. You stir up your coconut milk. I just want to play. I'm going to open my honey. Get my cinnamon ready. Everything's really just getting sprinkled on, poured on, sprinkled on. That's it. 10 seconds. I get to play with my food. I guess I'll get some more tongs. Okay, we made it. Okay, so we're going to flip them over to the other side. Ooh. If when you flip them, you wish they looked more cooked, you can cook them more. Mine are just scant. So one minute. Okay. They smell good. I've only ever had pizzas on a grill. I've never had them in a pan. I touched them. You guys, it wasn't even 15 seconds when I prepared my food. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that's what it's a measurement. It's a measurement, you guys. It's a few. That's how I feel. We are. Throw it up. We can do whatever we want with our pieces. My piece is alive. You see it? <laughs> it's like rocking. <laughs> okay, Peach. All right. That's my minute. So what are you going to do next? Just put them in the bowls that you got. I just really feel like I want this one to cook a little bit more. Okay, we're going to put these in the bowl, and then you're going to sprinkle cinnamon across the top of your peach. Oh, my cinnamon is like already ready to go. Just going to sprinkle some cinnamon on there. If you don't like a lot of cinnamon, don't put a lot of cinnamon. You like a lot of cinnamon? Go crazy. It says... 
Oh, cinnamon to taste. Oh, yours is dancing too, Jordan. So funny. So sprinkle the cinnamon on there. Are you alive? Alive! Cinnamon, come on. The cinnamon container, ever since I've had it, it either dumps out or it doesn't do anything. Okay, so cinnamon has been sprinkled. Now it's the coconut milk. So what it says, and I'll read you the exact words, pour coconut milk into the middle of the peaches and then around the peach. So I'm just gonna use my spoon as a guide and just kind of pour some in the pit, and then I'm gonna put some around the edge. I'm gonna round the inside the bottom of the bowl, and you can kind of scoop it up. So this is how I did it. There's no perfect way. Let's see what feels right. You can be... Yeah, you're good. Okay, you can do that to all your peaches. Put some coconut milk in the hole around the edges in the bottom of the bowl or the plate, whatever you're using. And that's it for the coconut milk. And then for the honey, it says one to two tablespoons. So again, it's how you like it. I'm going to take some honey. I'm just going to use my tablespoon and you're going to drizzle it. Ooh. And that's your peach. And the coconut milk should be kind of melting. And like, uh, you know, drip it all over the place. Ooh, delicious. You guys might want to eat dessert first. <laughs> so that is it. That's it. So Hermana, if you were cooking them at the same time, just when the peaches are done, you can even do the rest of this later. Peaches, gorgy, gorgy, gorgy. So that's it, friends. Here's my beautiful, pan fried peach. That's it. So with your dinner plate, a piece of that chicken, did my cheese melt? Nope. So I'm going to turn this back on. I'm just going to turn it to low. Mind you, my cheese isn't made out of dairy. I don't know if it'll melt. <laughs> you can reheat your veggies if you want to. Let me see. I'm going to reheat my veggies. Let's turn those on to low. And then you're good to go. You can even eat your dessert while you're reheating the other two things. Haha. <laughs> Why not, right? So you guys have to let me know how it comes out. I want pictures. I love pictures. And if you did not get a chance to tell me about your blender in about 4.30, let me know. I'm going to do my best to get your recipes, you guys. I know I say it all the time. Here's why I hesitate. Because I don't like them sometimes. <laughs> I edit them. So it takes me a minute. And I don't have everyone's emails, so then I feel funky, but I'm going to do it. And I have ideas brewing for like a digital online cookbook that I'm trying to figure out so that you don't have to like go through all the emails, not that I've sent very many, but um, then you can just go to the pages that you want. So that's my dream. That's my vision. I'm working on it. I'll keep you posted. All right, friends. I hope your dinner's delicious.